All right, we're up to uh, the fourth part of the Hemingway kit for their compact rotary brooch. What we're going to be making next is the spindle, part number three, which is right here, and it shows you in the center here. Now this has the brooch still in there, or the brooch, yeah, the brooch tool in this. But it's a kind of a complicated part. Yeah, uh, they. I only have this much left of material, so that's about two and a half inches, a little more than uh, two inches, two and a quarter inches uh, of material left. Now I haven't, um, I've made no errors uh, so far. I've made, I made these three parts with the uh, material, and we still have this left to make this, and that's. Uh, right on schedule you might say so here's a here's a picture of the spin here's a spindle and this is the this is a section the cutaway view of the spindle so there's a hole in it hole in it cross hole in it one two three four five diameters on the outside so Quite a bit. Total length of the part is not on the drawing, is it? Oh, now that would have been nice to know that, but uh, there's no total length of the part. And that uh, is kind of interesting, I think. No, here they did baselined it. I'm sorry, I'll take that back. So here's the baseline zero zero, and then you did, did progressive measurements throughout. And that's the best way to do it, right there. Have a baseline and go from there, and you'll end up with the right length part. So one and eight point. So we're looking at one point one eight. So about an inch and a quarter is really the total length, and I've got over two inches. I got two and a quarter inches here. So there's enough to hold and turn. And now, but turning here would be really tight next to the chuck. The, it's probably the optimum is to turn it between centers, which would be a lot. Uh, you, it gives you more clearance uh, between you and the chuck. Maybe we'll do that. That might be uh, easier for us to do. Anyway, let's go over there and work this out. So there's that drawing. So here's a little piece. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna face and center drill that. Then we'll be able to pull this out, grab it by the chuck by this little nib, and put the center in there for support. And we should be able to get that turned. So I got that center drilled. This needs to have a hole all the way through it. The one side is only four millimeters. So I have a number 22 drill there, which is basically four millimeters, a few tenths of a thousandths. Uh, I'm gonna drill that hole first since I'm already in the chut lathe here. I'm gonna drill that through the piece then I'm going to touch that, make that a little bit bigger with the center drill so I can hold it still. This end, and then I'll be able to bore it to being, I'll drill it bigger and then bore it to the 8 millimeter size it, this end needs to be. Uh, just a little bit different out of the sequence. I think it's going to be fine. So I drilled that small four millimeter hole through there, number 22 drill. I center drilled so I have a 60 degree angle for the center. 
The other end still had some of the 9 millimeter hole left in it so I was able to touch that with a large center drill and give a little bevel on it so that's centered also. Now we're just going to uh, turn that major diameter, start turning these diameters and uh, then we'll just be able to flip it around and still support it with the center. I'm going to turn the major diameter down to 17.8 millimeters or 0 0.700. What are we starting with, right? We are starting with 873. Well, my battery died, uh, so you didn't really miss anything, but I caught it in time. We're going to take a one, one cut here of 46 thousandths at 1760 RPM. Beautiful. 700, huh? I try a different insert. That and insert, I've, I've never had really good luck with that other insert. And and I had a, kind of a poor finish. Um, within uh, I'm within 393.8, but it, it's still... It's, it gave me a poor, kind of a poor finish. I had to buff it a little bit. But we're going to uh, use, try this other insert. I could be using high seat steel. That would always probably be good too. So the speed down 879 and different insert, bigger rate is at 30, 432. But as long as I can uh, get in there, uh, that's a lot better finish. I might have to go to high speed steel so I can get in here. I got stuck in there. So I spun it faster. Yeah, it's small diameter. I should have really cranked it up, but it'll, it'll work. We were looking for 276, but we can uh, clean that up and make it right. Be a little tight. I'll, I should try the little bearing on there. This, the tiny little bearing slips on here. And that's, oh, 
it, it's almost going so it's still a little on the big side we'll have to clean that up a little more Finally, now that's that's a, oh that's so that's such a good fit. It's, there we go. Now over this diameter, this this is where the thrust bearing sits. Now one of them is made to fit really nice, and that does fit very nice. And then the other one's made to slip over and have a little clearance, and that's perfect. So. Both of these diameters are just right. See, there's a thrust bearing. I'll go over that. Here we can just slip it over that, and that looks just oh, just perfect on the length of the shoulder. Yeah, that's going to be just fine. Since I'm not getting this perfectly flat against the shoulder, the this race or the thrust bearing, I'm going to put a tiny undercut right in that corner. There we go. That that made it perfect. So, as far as this, all this here is, is is done except for this is a little on the long side. This shoulder here, and I'm gonna I'll trim that off when uh, we're closer to the end here. So I decided to take it out of the lathe and what I've done is I've measured the length here even though this is too long it's okay calculated out how much is here this should, the center part is six and a half millimeters wide and I set a gauge block up and then for that height and put it on the surface plate and scribed the line you can see a little line there so now I can grab this in the chuck and machine this down out here and we'll have the center in here where I actually have a little 60 degree bevel already which I did before right we'll just be able to grab that So like that. Now I can machine this down.
we need to reduce this another 40 thousandths to 10 millimeters. And we're going to leave a little bit, half a millimeter down there. And that's the, the bearing it doesn't touch the shoulder. Now we need to do some real gentle turning on the face there, clean that up. This is where the bearing goes and we had to do a little bit of polishing on that to get that just right and came out nice. Now we need to drill this to, we need to make that an 8 millimeter hole. So we're going to drill it 1964 and then and then we'll bore it. Okay, we have the spindle. I put a little blue and I scribed a line in the center of the wide part of the, of the spindle. And I just did that. I stood it on the end on the surface plate and scribed a line there with the height gauge. Uh, I have a thick parallel underneath here uh, to hold, just to support this little V-block. And I found halfway with the edge finder on the one side there, they calculated it over for the center line and just eyeballed the center with a wiggler needle on the scribe line. We're going to drill a number 30 drill. Using a small spot drill. Then we're going to drill a number 30 drill for an M4.7 point, uh, millimeter tap. Uh, I only drilled halfway through. They they show they tell you to drill all the way through the part, and I'm not sure why. They only give you one set screw, so I don't know. I'm just gonna drill halfway through for one set screw. So I, thanks to my friend Jim uh, Fairbanks there. He sent me some metric taps, and I have now an M4.7 pitch tap here. So thanks again there, Jim.
and that should do it as far as the spindle goes I just got to clean up and deburr any burrs on the inside there came out very nice now if when you're doing the adjusting part of where the spindle sits in the body you don't want to only remove material from the back side here not from the front side and uh, I took off an extra 15 thousandths off of this surface uh, when I was uh, fitting it and adjusting it thanks a lot you guys and thanks for watching stay tuned for the next part